without really, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to elaborate on the same things that we've covered in the past, uh, or, uh, you know, as far as what's happened over these last few weeks with this uh, Mamash war against the Satan himself, uh, where uh, we've had to do everything and anything possible to publicize this uh, potential Chilul Hashem that was happening of bringing a missionary to Boca Raton Synagogue. Uh, Bo Hashem, uh, the good news is that anyone that's followed it knows that uh, the uh, event was canceled, uh, which is purely Siat Dishmaya. We'll mention a few things about it here and there, but overall, want to give anyone who doesn't know the good news that the immediate danger is over. The problem that we still have today is that the ideology is still there. The uh, longer term danger is still there and we still have to continue publicizing the truth to Am Yisrael so we could try to uh, wake as many people up as possible uh, and uh, Bezad Hashem will try to do another Musar Shior today to, uh, to connect it to it, to connect it to many other things that Hashem wants us to learn. Um, and again, as I've mentioned many times in the last few Shurim that we've talked about it, this is not a personal battle against any particular rabbi, any particular keilah. The reality of it is, aside obviously from the people that uh, are still fighting for the wrong side, the one that has to lose the most is me. I live there, it's an uncomfortable situation, I can't go to shul anymore over there, I have to change locations, move and so on, so if I, w if I was really worried about my own personal convenience, or my family's convenience, especially with a brand new son, Baruch Hashem, then this is the last thing that would be on my mind. Why would I want to disturb my own life? Now this whole debacle with the missionary, which for some strange reason some people still claim he's not a missionary, even though there's an actual video that we've showed and highlighted on the internet, where he says, not only is he a missionary, he wants everyone to be a missionary because that's what he, he trains missionaries. But we're going to ignore reality because let's not let the facts get in the way of everyone's version of the truth, whatever their version is today. The most difficult part today is the fact that the missionary is the one that actually canceled the lecture. Now even though we know of course this is the will of Hashem, Hashem it Barach saw the Mesirut Nefesh of the, how the team tried to do everything and anything possible for the honor of Hashem, trying to make sure that this disaster doesn't happen and that uh, we don't have even one Jew in danger. It's not for my kavod, it's not for anybody else's kavod, just for the sake of Am Yisrael. As much as some people like to think that it's for some alternative motive, I have no idea what that alternative motive is or what it could be, but nonetheless, the whole point was to stop a danger before it happens. Now why is it a problem that the missionary actually canceled it? The problem is that be to find out, how do we find out? We found out from an article that was written where the rabbi says that uh, not only is he upset to announce that the missionary, Matthew Kelly, is not coming, but he cried. He cried at the news that he's not coming. Now, I don't know, the last time the Rishon Letzion, the biggest rabbis in the world, came to a certain town, whether it's Florida somewhere, or it's in New York, or somewhere else, and he was supposed to go to a certain Keila, and he didn't go. Schedule got mixed up, he got busy, traffic, whatever the reason was. Did you ever see anyone cry because the Gdolador didn't show up? In my personal experience, never. I never even heard of anybody crying because the rabbi didn't come. But a missionary didn't come, we're crying. So this obviously shows that the ideology is a little off. We're still not sure what's happening here. Now why am I mentioning this again? Haven't we harped on this issue time and time again? It's against Allah to bring this guy uh, we, we've gone over this. What's the chidush? The chidush is 
when you are a rabbi, you are going to, whether you like it or not, you're going to affect and impact your keila. You're going to affect and impact your followers. Like it or not, you're going to affect them. Right or wrong, they're going to follow you. Many people are going to follow you blindly. It's just a reality. So what ends up happening is that if you see the comments on this article, the worst possible thing that could happen ended up happening. Forget about the fact that they said that we are we did the Chilu Hashem. The ones that went against it, we did the Chilu Hashem. Forget about the fact that they, for some reason, are blaming Rabbi Mizrahi about this anyway. I have no idea why they're blaming Rabbi Mizrahi, even though, yes, of course, he made a little section of his lecture talking about, he didn't start the whole thing, but for whatever reason, they want him to be the Koban. They're blaming him for starting the whole thing and controlling it and, and manipulating everything. No reason whatsoever. Forget about the fact that they're going against a big... Mezakeh Rabin, someone that helps people do tshuva, forget about the numbers, doesn't matter whether it's a thousand people do tshuva or a million people do tshuva because of it. Irrelevant. If one person did tshuva because of Rabbi Mizrahi, he's already something special. Not according to just me, according to the Torah. And I know for sure that he's made thousands upon thousands do tshuva. How? I know them. My family included. But nonetheless, let's say it's not the Rabbi Mizrahi issue. The issue here is the fact that when you have a big rabbi saying that something that's wrong is right, the Kehillah believes it. So if you look at the comments, what do the comments say? One Kehillah member has been bothering me nonstop for the last few days. He hasn't stopped commenting on, uh, on Facebook to me and on YouTube. And every way he can find me, he's sending me comments of how much of a bad person I am and I don't know this and I don't know that. And I'm just constant insults. The best part about it is this guy is a rabbi. And his hat is this big. He's got one of the furry hats. Nice. Nice, five, six, seven thousand dollars at least. But he's telling me, now I, I provide him sources, he doesn't want you to read the sources. I'm just bad. That, okay, so you have one. That's not so bad. It's not so bad. Then you have another guy, sends me another email, sends me a message on Facebook, says, it's time to move from Lago. He knows my address. And he starts, you know, he sends me a little mini threat that it's time for me to move away. So, hey, no big deal. Oh Hashem, in person I'm a little bit more intimidating than I am on camera. Especially when I have Hashem on my side. No problem. Fine, you want to threaten me, threaten me. I can. What's the worst of it all? This is, this is nothing, all this stuff. Inconvenience to me, who cares? What's the worst of it all? Another guy says, Oh, let's send a public apology. Let's send a public apology to Matthew Kelly. As a keila, we should send out a public apology for an idol worshiper missionary that steals Jewish souls every day. We're going to send him a public apology. But that wasn't enough. Another member wanted to top him off. He says, you know what? Let's all go and donate to the church. You want to believe me? You don't believe me? Go look at the comments yourself. Let's go donate to the church. Let's go support idol worship. Meaning, if Kelly would have actually come, it would have been better off already. That's how warped this ideology is. And that's how dangerous it is. When a leader doesn't take hold, and let's say, listen, according to Allah, I made a mistake. Not allowed. I didn't know he was a missionary. Or I knew, well, what? it doesn't make a difference. I made a mistake. As long as you're still fighting for your kavod, fighting for whatever reason you're fighting, and telling people you cried over it, and how we're the sinners, and this, and all this nonsense that's going on, the Kehillah is going to follow it. And what happens with these comments? All the comments that are saying, hey, look, but this Allah says this, this Allah says this, people that are supporting, but Hashem, this didn't happen, they erase all of those comments, and the comments that say, let's go donate to the uh, church, they don't erase, it's still there. Probably going to be there for at least another half hour before they delete that. Let's go donate to the church. What are we doing here? Are they going to say that's allowed too? 
You're allowed to donate to the church? You gotta go. So you just put a pass sale in the middle of the synagogue, and that's it. Finish it already. Finish. Change religion. Listen. With all due respect to everyone that knows Torah, everyone that's learned a day of Gemara, not a lifetime of Gemara, a day of Gemara. There's truth and there's falsehood. There's nothing in between. There's no gray. There's yes, there's no. There's Chilul Hashem, there's Ki 